Hi, this is Ivan and welcome to the channel. What I want to do today is talk about Air Manager 4 and how to uh, install and develop a panel, particularly the G1000 suite. What's been interesting is within one of the recent updates, the G1000 now works natively with Microsoft Flight Simulator, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to go a little more in depth than my previous video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over the steps on how to basically install Air Manager, how to install the plugin, and we will build a panel from scratch. And this will actually work on some of their other instrument panels, but I'm going to focus on the G1000. Now I will say that for the purpose of this video, I am primarily focusing on Windows and Microsoft Flight Simulator. So this is not a Mac uh, or X-Plane uh, scenario, but a lot of this will carry over. So let's uh, go ahead and get started, and I'm going to... We'll start with the uh, Air Manager. So what you would need to do is download Air Manager and install it onto your computer. Now they do have a demo, and uh, they also have uh, options for Windows, Mac, and Linux. There's also an iPad app, which I don't know fully works or if it works at all with uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. But... Uh, for our purposes, we will just basically focus on Air Manager for the Windows PC desktop version. So to download that, what you're going to do is you're going to click on Support, and then you're going to go to where it says Wiki. And from this page, you can download the two programs that you need. One would be Air Manager for Desktop. You would just click the Download Install and go through that process. And then the other one which gets overlooked is the plugin and this plugin is required to use Air Manager 4. So I'm actually going to go through the plugin install. The uh, desktop install for the program itself is pretty straightforward. So click on download and install and you'll see download the flight simulator plugin for Windows here. So it's kind of easy to miss but click on that and it will download. Once you do that, you can go ahead and click on it. It's going to give you this. Click on more info. Run anyway. Click yes. My screen may look a little bit different because I am running Windows 11. So far I've not had any issues with it. And if you notice it detected that I have X-Plane 11 and Microsoft Flight Simulator installed. So it installed the appropriate plugins to interface between the Flight Sim and Air Manager. So now I can close this out. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to open up uh, Air Manager. So I'm going to click on that. And this is Air Manager. You can see I already have, if you look to the left, I already have a number of panels. Uh, the one that you see is their kind of standard six-pack. Uh, they call it the demo panel. What I'm going to do is build a panel from scratch. So what I'm going to do is come up here to where it says panel. I'm going to click add. You see where it says blank panel. I'm going to click on that. Actually double click on it. And down here it'll say back or add. Click on add. So now I have a blank generic panel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a G1000 instrument. So what I want to do now is come up to instrument, click on that, and it takes a couple of seconds, and then this list will populate. If you notice, this is the instruments that are currently able to be downloaded. And if you notice, it has icons where you can see if it works with X-Plane or Flight Simulator, Prepared, etc. I'm going to type in G1000 and you see this G1000 overlay will, will come up. And it will overlay or impose, superimpose this instrument over this blank panel. And you can see I can move it around. I can also resize it. So I'm going to make it as big as it can without going over the borders. 
and the this is laid out in such a way that on a 1080p setup there's there's going to be leftover space which you can use for other instruments um, the trim indicator etc but right now we'll just we're just going to do this so that is the layout if you scroll down and you see where it says default we're going to change that to G1000 demo so now this is the panel with the G1000 instrument so what we're going to do now is you can scroll down I have a three display setup and if you notice this shows the three displays it also gives the resolution I'm running 1080p so I will leave this at 1920 by 1080 and for now I'll put it on display one but I'm actually going to change that actually I'll just do it now it's going to be display three and I am going to check the click through You don't you can do what you like. That means you can click through. If there's something under this panel, you can click on it. And I'm gonna enable I have a knobster installed. And I'm going to enable that. I want the background mode to be transparent because this instrument is gonna be overlaid on top of the pop-out window from Microsoft Flight Simulator so we can utilize the G1000. Now to explain this a little more in depth this is not a G1000 in terms of the functionality this is just a interface that allows you to click on the buttons on a touch screen and that will in turn be the same thing as if you were using your mouse to click on the buttons within Microsoft Flight Simulator. So the G1000 functionality itself is strictly, you're at the, uh, it's, it's determined by what Microsoft Flight Simulator or X-Plane is capable of. There's no G1000 functionality built into this interface. It, is, it really is simply an interface. So the next thing I need to do is you see where it says G1000 demo. I'm going to click this little triangle and you can see where it says G1000 overlay. I'm going to click on that and the big parameter here is pilot PFD, copilot PFD, or MFD. We want pilot PFD because this is the unit that sits right in front of the pilot. And so this is the one that's squarely in front of me it is being it will be displayed on my small 13 inch touch panel which is mounted on a flight velocity plastic panel that is bolted to the top of my honeycomb alpha so that is the unit in front of me on top of my honeycomb bravo quadrant i have a second 13 inch panel also mounted on a flight velocity uh, plastic mount and the second display will show the MFD. So for this panel, though, I want PFD. And then it pretty much saves as you go. You don't have to do anything. Here is, I'll show you some more panels while we're here. This is the demo panel. This is the Cessna panel. I use this quite frequently. Um... This one has some of the Garmin units set up the same way. This part here is uh, transparent. You have to pop out the windows, uh, the Garmin units from within Microsoft or X-Plane. And because it's transparent, it will overlay on that and you can see that. Um, and then here are my completed, is my completed G1000. And this, you see here, I have a second uh, instrument that I added. And that was just so, uh, my trim indicator. But basically the other panels are the same. Display 3, which happens to be the one right in front of me. Input mode, I forgot to mention this, is touch and mouse. That means 
I can use my mouse on my external display as well as touch. And so locked always on top and click through. I have all of those. Knobster enabled. And then if I come to here, click on that, click on that. Again, pilot PFD. So that is basically how you would set up the G1000. What's really nice about this again is that they have now this is this now works natively with Microsoft Flight Simulator. Before you had to use third party or additional third party plugins and workarounds and there are tons of videos about how to do that, but this is really very straightforward. And I'm not doing any program, I'm not editing any code. I am clicking some parameters but but that is it so that is how we do that so i'm going to shrink this down and i'm going to go ahead and open up microsoft flight simulator so here is microsoft flight simulator and so what i have to do and actually what i will do is i will go to an external view on this for some of this but actually from here what I'll do is I'll go ahead and start the plane or turn it on and you can see these panels now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop these panels out by hitting the right alt key when I say right to the right of the space bar and that should turn to a plus sign I'm gonna click on that and you see how that pops the window out. Now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on this. And that pops the window out. The problem is now they're all in the same window. So I have to separate these. So just click on this little magnifying glass. And now I have two separate windows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and hold on this top margin here. And I'm going to slide this over to my external monitors and let me see I've got a camera set up we'll see if this will pick up so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide this first one over to right here and I'm gonna slide this guy over to right here and actually let's go ahead and we'll just focus on the primary function so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up Air Manager and I'm going to click on the appropriate, let me go back to desktop. I started up Air Manager. I'm going to come over here and click on my G1000 panel and then I'm going to click on Show up here, Show. And that's going to activate it on my third on my panel. So now you can see I have the display. So what I'm going to do now is, and you see I had clicked always on top. So you see how that pop out goes up under. And I'm just going to line it up in the corner. This doesn't take very long. And I'm going to bring that out like this. Okay, and now I'm going to do the same thing on the second display, the MFD. Let me bring that up, and I'm going to go actually back to the desktop. I'm going to open up this again. I'm going to come down here to G1000 MFD. I'm going to click Show, and now it's down here. And you can see I have added in that margin, I did add some additional gauges and a flaps indicator because I had the space, so I decided to do it. But I'm going to line this up again. It goes, you can see how it goes under. Go like that. Just kind of tuck it in the corner there so it'll line up appropriately. And it does a really good job of lining up. And there we go. So now this is the MFD G1000 and if I were to 
let me come to an external view here and I'll kind of show you what I have. So this is the Knobster. If you can see that, it's kind of dark. Not a lot of contrast because it's black, but inner knob, I mean outer knob, inner knob, and then a button. So if I click, say on this com, and this is on the MFD, if I rotate that, the outer one, you can see the number changing. The smaller numbers. And if I click on that, it'll go down to COM2. And again, I can change the numbers. And here, I'm going to click on that. And it swapped them around. So, just another rundown. So these panels, I, I got from eBay, they're touch panels. Uh, they're 13.3 inches, I believe. And I think I paid $120 each for them. The plastic mounting panels from uh, Flight Velocity were $50 each. I have two of them. The Knobster, I want to say, was about $100. And plus the cables. Uh, so, I, you know, this is three, dollars $400 for all of this. But what I have is a very good um, approximation of a G1000 suite that I'm not going to say is good as the real SIM gear because that looks like I've not used it personally, but it looks like it's really nice gear. But that's also close to $2,000. And this is somewhere between three and $500 when it's all said and done. So I'm really very happy with this, and it's very easy to set up. Um, I'll go back to the um, the multifunction display, and just for example, what I'm going to do is I'm and I'm doing this all. Actually, I'll do it from the external view. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to hit direct. It's got K top. I'm going to click the FMS, and I'm going to put in a new destination, and I'm doing this all from the panel. So let's see, we'll do Kansas City International. You see it pops up. I'm going to hit enter. This says activate. Hit enter again. Now I have entered in my course. I'll switch over to primary. Now you can see on primary, I'm going to click on heading. Again, I can, I can change my bug. I'm going to click on the transponder. I can enter the code. So now I just changed my transponder code to 5421. I can go back to VFR. I'll change it back. Um, so really, really very cool. Um, I can do all the buttons pretty much work. Autopilot over here, um, nav radio again. You can see the nav changing. I'm clicking on the panel. Um, I'll do another external view. You can see I am, uh, let's see, I'll go back. And I will change the barometer. So I just clicked on barometer. And you can see I'm changing my barometer. So my altitude is changing. It's really pretty easy to do. Um, I'm very happy with this setup uh, because this actually, I'm a, I'm a student pilot and the uh, I fly a Cessna, I train in a Cessna 172 with the G1000. I do occasionally use the steam gauge plane that we, that my school has, but primarily I fly in this. And like I said, this works really well. And it's, I think, really reason, uh, very affordable. Again, I'd have to add it up, but somewhere between three and $500 and I'm comparing that 
excuse me, I'm comparing that to almost $2,000. Now, granted, it's not quite apples to apples. The real Sim Gear has the wonderful, you know, tactile knobs and buttons, and I don't have to, you know, it, the knobster is a little bit slower than that. Having said that, it, it still works really well. And so this just makes it much more uh, reasonable. So basically, that is that is it. That is how you set up the G1000. And the other instruments and uh, the other panels on Air Manager work very similar. So for example, if I go, um, if I open up the Air Manager again, if I was wanted to practice more in the Steam Gauge version, I could click on this 172 panel and have this show up on panel three and it absolutely would and I can actually do that I can click on show and now it is showing of course I have to it's under the G1000 primary so I would have to hide the let me hide this just a second and close panel and I'll put this on PFD and so now you can see the panel that I would use if I was flying the steam gauge and right now it's all wonky because I haven't started up the plane so there's no vacuum that's why the instruments aren't being accurate except for the altimeter but again I could press on the the barometer and you can see I'm changing so that is pretty much how that goes. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. Uh, just a little more in depth. What I'm not doing here is I'm not programming. These panels and instruments, you can get really into the weeds. If you know how to do code, there's, a, there's, there's tutorials out there apparently. Um, that's not me. I, I like these pre-populated panels um, with, or the pre-populated instruments. I can do that pretty easily. In the G1000, since they made it native, really dead simple. Just remember that when you're setting up your two panels, again, I'll go to this view. When you're setting up your two panels, it's you're running two instances. So this panel you would set for PFD, and this panel you would set for MFD. And it's not very obvious that, but... Um, how to do that, but I did demonstrate that earlier. So again, hope it was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions and if I can, I'll be happy to answer them. Not so much on the functionality of G1000. I'm, I'm learning that myself. And the Microsoft Flight version is a little bit limited um, and possibly very limited compared to the, to the real thing or even to the X-Plane version, but this is still a really good solution um, to, to making the flight sim more immersive. So you guys have a great day. And again, just let me know if there's any questions down below. Have a good night.